Hey, welcome back to my channel. It's Brittany Nicole here. And I wanted to do this video because I wanted to talk about basically why I got into the beauty industry and what I think about it right now. Um, I just wanted to talk about just basically a little bit about, a little bit about what I do and why I do it and what I see as far as the beauty industry, what I do and don't like. Um, because there's a lot of things that are out there that I've learned that I've kind of um, gotten into and thought, you know what, things need to change or I can understand why some people get upset about certain things. Because at one point I was just a fan of makeup. I was just a person that would buy it and didn't really know the ins and outs of things. And then I went to school and I started reading up on things and um, watching different beauty vloggers and things like that. I started to... Realize, okay, this is this is more than just buying makeup. This is a different thing. This is there's deeper issues here, and there's things that people need to change. And so I can understand why some people have frustration with certain brands and things that they that happen that they're being they're not being included as far as the shades, or they're seeing the same type of girl being the face of the brand. So of these brands, so I can understand that. So basically, I've loved makeup and fashion all my life. Um, I come from a family of athletes, but I was never really into sports like that. I was always into girly things and the industry itself, um, fashion and artistic things. When I was in high school, I wasn't allowed to wear makeup till I was 16. So the first brand I ever really wore was MAC. Um, I just wore lip gloss and lip liner. That's all I would wear. And after high school, I started wearing makeup um, more. Um, by then I was allowed to do whatever I wanted. And even when I was in high school, some of my favorite brands to wear were like Apple Bottom, Darion, um, well, that was after high school, but Apple Bottom was one that I wore in high school, and Baby Fat. So I would watch fashion shows, I'd watch different things about makeup artists on TV, and that was interesting to me. And once I got into college, and, and even after college, I started to get more into makeup and how to put it on the right way. Because if you look at some of my old pictures, I deleted a lot of them off of Instagram. I was terrible. I was really bad. I didn't know a lot of things about, you know, contouring. Because it really wasn't popular back then. And even different things that don't look good on your skin tone. I would just wear whatever. So I wanted to learn these things. And I wanted to become a professional. So I went to school last year. I graduated from a Q QC Academy. Makeup Academy, which is the number one online school for makeup. They do hair as well as fashion classes. And I just learned a lot of things about skin tones and undertones and the do's and don'ts of makeup applying in, in the industry. And I started watching other beauty bloggers that would talk about things that I didn't know anything about as far as inclusion and skin tones and being left out and certain girls that are being put on these pedestals, even in the natural hair industry. So... I saw, wow, this is different. This is different than what I expected. So basically for me, what I got from it was, yes, I noticed at times there are certain types of girls that are used as the model for these brands. Some of them are lighter. Some of them have a different certain, certain texture of hair. Um, and then some of the brands that say they cater to all skin types, skin tones, they don't because I'm not the darkest person there is. And Jackie Ina talks about this a lot about sometimes the industry thinks that the darkest shade is her. Or someone like me. And you have Nima Tang. You have Lupita Nyong'o. You have Viola Davis. There's darker shades. You have Denai Greta from Black Panther. So they get left out a lot. So when brands like Fenty Beauty, for example, comes out with 40 shades. She's a singer and an actress. She doesn't do makeup. But yet she wanted to make sure that everybody was included. And I thought that was great. Because a lot of brands don't cater to people like me. I try to find contour is too light. Or a foundation shade is too light. And the undertone is terrible. My undertones are red. So I need something that's going to help that. And sometimes I can't find the right stuff. So I'll buy the brushes or I'll buy the lip gloss. But I want to buy other things too. And Jackie, I just said that the industry never thought about us from the very beginning. It was never for us. But it's helped. It's gotten better. But there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. And it's sad that even in 2018, we still have to deal with people doing things the wrong way. Like with the whole shape tape a uh, foundation with Tarte. That was terrible. And you know it's bad when even light-skinned people or white people were saying it was bad. If they can't even find anything, that's bad. So, because a lot of times they can find whatever they want. We can't. And they were even unimpressed with it. So, when you don't have a brand, when you have a brand that just panders or 
just doesn't put the effort in. Don't even try. If you're not going to do it the right way, don't even try. And what I like about Fenty Beauty, she's one of the brands that, and she's not the first one to do this, but she's one of the ones that really put some effort in and really made it something that it, it, I wasn't expecting. When I first saw what she was doing, I was like, are you serious? Because a lot of brands don't do that. And I mean, MAC has 43 shades. Um, Maybelline's done good. Um, Marc Jacobs, NARS. But a lot of brands don't. They don't do what she's doing. They don't do what MAC does to make sure that everybody feels included. And I love her foundation. I found a shade that I like. I wear 430. And I love that it oxidizes, but it doesn't look bad. Because sometimes oxidation with foundation is terrible. And for those of you who don't know what that means, that's when it gets darker on your face. So she really took her time. And a lot of brands that want to cater to us, they don't put the effort in. They don't make it about, they just basically say, whatever, this is what you got. That's all that's left. And I remember when I watched Jackie Ida's video with Alyssa Ashley talking about Tarte's foundation. She said that it is a lot of money that's spent to do darker shades and to make, to expand the brand. It's a lot of money that's put in there. It's a lot of work that needs to be done as far as the ingredients and all of that. But when there's no effort, why even try? Because there was no, no effort. And for her to not be able to find something to wear in that whole new collection, you said that the concealer, which I haven't even tried yet, is good. So what happened with the foundation shades? And some of these brands who talk about inclusion, they don't do that. And even with Tarte, when she said that you never see anybody that's a part of Tarte that looks like her, she was right. Even for Lisa Ashley, you know, I would I used to follow Tarte on Instagram and, and um, well, maybe I still do. But I did used to follow them on Snapchat. I would never see anybody on there that looked like me. And it wasn't until she said that I was like, she's right. And when you don't see somebody that looks like you, usually nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, they don't have anybody to, they don't have anything for you. And that's not good. So I feel like for me, what I wanted to do with the beauty industry is I wanted to make sure that everybody felt included. You know, I want to be able to work with people like myself. Being a disabled woman, you don't see us a lot being seen as a figure of beauty. Um, so the, the the model type chicks and the girls who love of hip hop and that's not what I grew up on in the 90s all the girls that we had as our figure of beauty were natural looking women all shades all sizes and it's just not fair that we get left out on one on one spectrum it's your brown skin then you don't see anybody looks like you and what you're doing what they're doing and doing the modeling thing or doing things that are representing for beauty brands and no disrespect because I, I do support collaborations I love the girls that do but a lot of the girls that do get these collaborations, they look like models. They look like video girls. And what about the ones, because like, B-Face Honey, she's the first big beauty vlogger I ever watched. I don't think she even has a collaboration that I know about. But yet some of the other girls that do, they look like models. And we need to be more inclusive with that. You know, if you see, if you know a girl on YouTube, even a guy that has a lot of subscribers, like a Patrick Star, like a Jackie, I like it, it's my Ray Ray, or, or Shayla Mitchell, Makeup Shayla. Give them an opportunity because that's something I want to do one day. I want to be somebody that does something that people like me don't get to do. I want to be able to have my own collaboration, my own makeup, and be able to cater to a, a demographic of people that get left out a lot because we do. On top of the fact that I'm brown skin and being disabled. And I want to give people like me a more of a platform because I do follow other girls that are in wheelchairs that are like me that you don't get to see that very often. And I think that the beauty industry needs to do their work you need to do the work better and make sure that everybody's included and no one feels left out. Because it's not fair to, to only cater to a certain type of girl with a certain type of curly hair or skin tone. Because even with curly hair brands, some of the times when you see these ads, they're, they're biracial. And my curl pattern might be different from theirs. So you want to show everybody's included. I didn't understand the whole Shea Moisture incident thing. But then again, I did. Because I didn't even know that it was just a black brand because I never saw anybody black talking about it on social media. I wouldn't see other women talking about it. So I wasn't aware of this. But you have to be careful about that kind of stuff. Because people get offended. And some people on social media are too sensitive. I'm not one of those people. But I get it. I understand. I think that for me, I love doing makeup. I love makeup because it makes people, women feel beautiful and enhanced. And it's important that we do make women feel like they're included. Because it's sad when you go to buy a new brand and you can't support it. So... For me, it's important that I do that and be a part of helping the industry, not being a part of the problem.